Everybody needs to put their energy together for the Spirit Bomb to see if we can get ourselves a Game 3. Welcome back, everybody. R.I.P. to Kira Toriyama. Extreme Gaming starting off with a hell of a clash. Barely able to get away on XM and are going to be able to find the First Blood backstabbing Team Spirit as they attempted to go for the kill and instead find themselves losing casualties left and right. XM, he uh, came in and almost died, got away, and now is chasing after the last remaining member of Team Spirit to get out. Laurel, three for one. Extreme Gaming. They didn't just get first blood, which we talked about how they rarely do. They got three first bloods. The battle begins. That is not what Spirit wanted on that high ground push. They get three kills and they split the rune. So Laurel gets back there in time to at least salvage something of this. But reflection plus I think a blood grenade on four. Did an immense amount of work there. <laughs> Did he really? The fact XM was also the target for Spirit first is is tough because he's the tankiest hero level one in the game, basically. I think literally any other hero would have yeah. died there, right? Yeah, it's that is just good positioning from XG. And then they get an idol on split. <laughs> yeah, that's not oh, yeah. supposed to happen. I don't think I've ever seen an idol on split before the game starts, but he got one. So that's absolutely sick fight from XG. Gives him a lot of extra gold to play around with. Particularly on the Enigma and the AM, they were the two big beneficiaries of that, and not heroes that you want to give a start here. Again, I go back to XG going for like some of this, like not necessarily clunky, but late game scaling powerhouses, right? Anti Mage Enigma. If you give these heroes a good start, there's not much weakness there for you to exploit. Mm -hmm. With a lineup on Team Spirit that you have late game of your own in this Void Darks here, used to be a really prevalent combo, but it's not as strong as it used to be, and there's no real good combos for Claps to play off of in this mid-game transition. He doesn't have a melee support to go in like a tinier clock. Right. The less track is okay shell surge target, but it's not like, you know, it's not insane. You could maybe get some vac and a split earth with the shard later. That's kind of cool. Uh, and you get, you of course can shell the void here, but there's no big, huge punch in terms of comeback potential. So if you fall behind in this game, the panel was talking about tempo versus team spirits lineup. It could get really scary really fast. And we're seeing Terrorblade just dominate the laning phase now. You know, this yeah. was a lane that DY owned last game. XG went back to it. If I'm seeing this hero this early in the draft, I'm just assuming it's the five because I think most of these teams are very confident playing this as a five into anything and winning the lane. And it kind of fits the archetype for fives anyway because then it, you know, in team fights it could play off of the the Sunder if need be. You know, show up reflection. Yeah, of course. On the front lines, if you don't die, then try and go for a sunder save, which oh, is nice kind of natural five position saving mechanism anyway. Amir uh, gets forced off the lane, but he makes the most of it with a water rune deny. Give Laurel a nice little advantage here, and this off lane not going too well for collapse early as Terrorblade makes his presence felt yet again. Hey, what do you think? Uh, I, th I think one of the downsides of you being a caster, we don't get to hear your thoughts uh, on draft as it progresses, because you were a drafter. So what do you make of Extreme? Why are you giving me this look like I'm, I'm trying to pay you a compliment, right? What do you think of Extreme Gaming's Suspicious. like drafting process? Because I, I thought it was pretty cool. It was collapse like... Collapse is gone. Yeah, he's dead. Nice little body form. block there. Ah, this is a rough... This is a, such a rough start. And again, I go back to the pre-rune fights, man. Like, if these backfire on you, they backfire so hard. This is... Uh, this is a lion lane where he's having to, to backtrack creep waves here. This is terrible. He's probably going to die for it, too. Yeah, he has nothing. He's, yeah, dead. He's, he's, he's dead. He's dead. Orb of Venom delivered. You have an extra blood grenade. This, you just can't play on the side versus this hero. Because you can never out-trade him with his insane armor. Yep. I don't know. You have to play these duel on duel lanes and, and punish him there, but... Again, it's like a relatively new support. People aren't used to playing against it. It catches you off guard, and then you're trapped in a situation. I got run down by the Terror Blade. You know, it, you've never seen it before. It comes and surprises you. You're asking me about draft? Yeah. What do you think of, of the, the drafting process there from Extreme in this one? I mean, they kept the flex open very deep. And yeah, it was super flexible. I think sometimes it works out, and sometimes it backfires horribly. Here, it seems to have worked out. I think they weren't, aren't necessarily super happy with the Void getting stolen from them. I don't know if they expected that, okay. but I think they dealt with it fairly decently, and I'm surprised that Spirit went back for this Lion Shatter demon, like, right away. I thought I think usually when Spirit lose game one, they tend to think about why the fights were hard. 
Okay. And reprioritize for that. And I think Darkseer is maybe one of the things they thought about there, but Lion Shadow Demon just don't necessarily do a huge amount for you in these five on five clashes. They don't give you big AoE spells. They don't give you a melee hero that can play around these early skirmishes and the runes and another source of initiation. It's just shifting more of the fight starting to the cores once again, which was part of an issue last game for them. So I'm surprised they went back for double backline supports. To me, it's like they just didn't want to let this Terrorblade be a core hero. Yeah. But I still feel like that's overreacting to it a bit, you know? Because the second you commit three heroes to deal with core Terrorblade and they make it a five, you lose all that value. Because mm. these heroes are not good versus support Terrorblade. Who cares? So with this support duo, the it puts more pressure on the cores to make plays. And part yes. of game one's uh, failing for Team Spirit was their playmaker was Collapse. Collapse got shut down in lane. And it's looking like the same thing is happening now in this game, too. Yeah, this is this poses the question. If Collapse is getting bodied on the lane, who's going to make plays on the map for Team Spirit? You have to go behind the Lashrak. Again, it just comes down to Laurel. And that tower taking and the offensive power of that Lashrak in game one was pretty slow. Not all of it on him, but just hard. This hasn't been a hero we've seen play ultra fast this patch unless you have very specific heroes with him. Generally, he functions best with either healers or melee heroes, which nice they don't have either. Nice back into an Eidolon split there. They do manage to get the kill on Mira in that fight bottom lane. Of course, the Faceless Void is fine because he has time walk, but it doesn't, like, stop the fact that he can't lane after he uses that time walk. So. Oh, we, we are already in a, a concerning phase of this laning phase for Spear because Seriously. this Enigma is absolutely out of control. He, he has a very favorable lane versus two single target heroes that cannot deal with the Eidolons. He had the most net worth off that early exchange, and his Vlads is already done. He had, he had a five-minute oh, Vlads. Again, Extreme Gaming making the extra rotation to shut down Collapse Double very TV. early. Now, he doesn't actually die, and they do counter-rotate a bit here. Maposhka trying to get the punish. Disruption on AM would have been great, but uh, couldn't quite get it. And XM's like coming back into play. Bugged out as he is, they're going to catch Mira. Onslaught will run him over. Trap him in the trees, maybe? Yeah, gets the grab. Now he's dead. <laughs> I might try to take the last hit. Cheeky. <laughs> of course he did. So what's your answer to the Enigma push in this game? Because XXS is... I mean, he's playing versus an empty lane right now. He had the five-minute Vlads. His net worth is out of control. He got an extra kill on the lane, and this just frees up the supports to do whatever they want right now. So Jin Q is living the life. Rushing Blink Dagger. I mean, what are what are your options here in, in this kind of game as the Enigma with this kind of start? World's your oyster, so what do you build? I wouldn't mind early Blink, but I, I don't know. I don't think this is just a Blink BKB game, honestly. I, I think there's... It's tempting to do, but you have Shadow Demon save, you have Chrono. I don't know if you need to play for it. I wouldn't mind just some auras here. Yeah, I was thinking, why not just go Greaves? And, and just like match the, just make it so Team Spirit run out of damage when they're up against Tiny, a Greaves Enigma, and a Primal Beast. And an AM that obviously isn't taking shit for magic damage. It might go back to how much farm priority actually like giving this Primal as well, because we've seen this hero scale really hard in this tournament. So again, yeah, I wouldn't be afraid to, to maybe go like another early aura item here. I think Casual Blink is also fine, just lets the hero play the fights. And if he wants to go blink BKB, Ags, whatever, and just play for big black holes because they have enough heroes that are going in and forcing Chrono, forcing Disruption out, I think that's a perfectly fine route too. Because if you think his Primal is going to be really strong and he's just charging in, you're going to have to use Disruption early. You're going to have to Chrono somebody. And then you just get this free BKB hole that's uncancelable by everything else. Mm. I guess my, my problem with that, it still predicates on black hole being a big factor when there are counters. Whereas, like, the, uh, that's why I like the aura build. It's like, okay, they can stop the black hole all they want, but it doesnn't stop. And well, Enigma's impact is Toro's dead. dead. He is well read by XXS, man. He had a perfect read of that situation. And Vlad pumps up these Eidolons. And look at the last track coming in with a haste rune, though. It's not going to be so easy for them to deal with them, especially since there's just two supports. It's kind of kind of gnarly sometimes. You, you know, imagine some Dota player just tuning in. 
It's been five years since they watched the game. They see tiny tear blade. They assume that's two cores. No, it's two supports. Times have changed. You either change with them or it passes you by. XM's all over the map, man. He goes top lane. Nice Whoa. vacuum wall. He's gonna burn some man out. And he'll live because of it, so well played. XM went top to, you know, he went bottom early to try and kill Collapse and that whole thing, and then he went top, secret that tower, then he comes back to bottom. He's not sticking around mid long for at all. And Laurel is getting a lot more involved now. I mean, there is a clear difference. Maybe that's what they settled on, is that Laurel just can't farm for his Bloodstone timing. They just need him to be more active. And yeah, he has to be. This Darkstar lane went way too bad. The Enigma had too good a start. They need to use this Max Edict and get some early game kills that enable the supports. The supports are really good at setting stuff up for the Lashrac. You need to keep playing for it as the he Eidolons. He still got the kill from the Eidolons? Take out Maposhka. What happened, Maposhka? That wasn't supposed to happen at all. He got bodied. Straight, literal body. He just took 800 physical damage from Enigma <laughs> and died. Did he get ambushed? Was his Eidolons like hiding around a corner somewhere? No, he just chased him down. Oh, wow. Wait, are the Eidolons faster than the yes. Shadow Demon? Yes, significantly faster. Eidolons are not slow. These things have like 370. It's been such a long time since I played that this hero regularly. The Enigma's game continues to become better. And once more, chips more weight to... Some rotations coming in. He's just trying to slow down these supports. Wait long enough that XM can get here. Mira is going to try and cover Mopochka. They get the disruption. Now the split Earth. Oh, he's got a BKB already. No, he's got a shield rune. Oh, shield rune. <laughs> what, was that? what was that golden? What the hell was that? Yeah, a little too anxious there, Cap. His game's not that good. <laughs> I swear to oh, God, nice. I just saw back on the gold. backside. We'll get him another kill and XG overextending. Not respecting this Lesh Rax early game damage output. I mean, they have decent net worth, but they don't have survivability yet. <laughs> yeah, I see the, the shield rune plus what? Edict hitting it, it's him? It's the cosmetic is what it is. The, the shield rune on that cosmetic just looks <laughs> dumb. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a BKB. I'll give it to you. <laughs> this is why right. I said the power creep on cosmetics, man. Nobody talks about it, but it's out of control. Dude, you, uh, and you were right. The Eidolons, uh, they get 30 movement speed per level. They go up to 370 at yep. max level. They're strong. Damn. This spell scales really well now. And it does cost you HP on the scaling, so better pay off in some form. And of course, true to Dota 2 stats, uh, doesn't show that increase. No, I mean, why would it? <laughs> it's just Dota. It's but not... apparently they get 30 per level. Austin, if you want to play a game where the game just tells you everything a spell does, because you, you can't figure it out for yourself, <laughs> go play League of Legends. Okay, that's what it's there for. Okay. And you can read text for your all, all to your delight all day. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'll stick with a with a true game <laughs> where I don't know what the hell's happening because the tooltips haven't been updated in six years. That's my kind of game right there. Okay. The kind of game where you have to test every patch. That's right. To see what interactions work that's and right. what don't. I enjoy that unknown element. Mm. We see we should see stuff every tournament. tournament. Where we go, I don't know what that does. <laughs> Dota 2 players truly are the explorers of the 21st century. Treading into the great unknown. That's right. Born born too late to explore early RPGs. Born too early to explore AI. But born just at the right time to lose all my MMR and... Smash the desk. Destroy my computer, that's right. Second Wisdom Rune, 30 seconds. So we'll see who's going to be making some moves here. Seems like a very even game this time around. Again, Laurel got involved, and it seemed to really halt Extreme's pressure. I mean, they the way that bottom lane was going and everything, it felt like they were going to maybe be taking a 2-3k gold lead off the laning phase, but that has been stymied. Yeah, Laurel did a really nice job bringing it back. 
They are going the BKB on XXS, so you're going to have to think about that team fight as this game progresses. Again, your two points interaction, Shadow Demon save, and Chrono for it. And you already had the Battle Fury done for Ame. We haven't talked about him a lot, but he got a decent amount off that rune fight. He had an absolutely free lane, extra kills on the lane. They rotated to him again. Very fast Battle Fury timing. Yeah. He is... Radiant are scanning. So they, they have a net worth lead, but it's probably going to grow a lot for Extreme just because Ame is likely to be out farming. I feel like the difference between this Battle Fury timing and the Battle Fury timing he had in that Ursa game is an entire Battle Fury time. <laughs> yeah, that was, that, that was like a 20 minute Battle yeah. Fury, right? Yeah, he, he has lowered his average by like Radio four minutes in this tournament. <laughs> this game alone. So feeling himself here and it. Put the team spirit in a position where you better start taking some more towers and limiting the space this anti mage has. So you feel better about take, taking those fights. Because Ame is going to be able to join these fights and look for the big ults on the rush rack. This would be a huge blow to spirit if Laurel dies here, but they do have some backup behind him. XM, he's going to go for the kill onto the Dark Seer. Won't quite get it. The Avalanche a little bit too late. Collapse able to get away. Wow, now the Purge Flow yeah. turns around with the Pulverize and DY's extra damage. Can they do enough? Nice save with the Disruption. Ame has to back away. Created his own illusion of himself while XXX looked for the Black Hole. Got canceled out immediately. Laurel's going to run down DY. Take that tower too. Damn. And Team Spirit. They say, yeah, we know what you're going to do. Countered it beautifully. And this is the risk of going for that Blink BKB. You're a lot weaker at this point in the game for what your net worth shows, because if that black hole gets canceled and they have a lot of stuff to cancel it while you don't have that BKB, you're just instantly dead. No team fight impact there from XXS. A really nice man up from Laurel, who once again dragging these fights back for Team Spirit. They're just playing behind the Lashrak. They had the mech on Collapse to give them that extra HP, and it really shows versus these early game nukes. Suddenly, your Leshrac is the top net worth. That's also just not a fight Ame can join to find that huge mana burst. Yeah, I think he got, he got walled, and I'm not sure if he had Blink. I think maybe Blink was on cooldown. So as soon as an illusion was created in me, he's like, my fight's done. I'm not joining. I mean, he just doesn't want to join these fights unless it's very clear. Okay, I'm going to TP Blink in, ult the Lesh, and just clean up. Yeah. He, it, he'd rather just be farming. He's having an amazing game here, so you don't want to kill it. Like going to a fight, die, and then give a big kill away. Right. It's a breathing room for Spirit after a rough early game. So they now hold the gold lead, in fact. Midas on Yatoro paying off here. It's giving him a lot of extra levels as well. And it'll let him keep up with that Battle Fury AM. So he's playing for the late game. Absolutely here. He is. He saw what Ame did in game one. Time to step it up. And he Proof said, myself for Ame. I can do that too. But better. Anything you can do, do better. All right. BKB needs a thousand gold for that. So extreme gaming likely going to be taking a bit of a timeout here. Once they get that, though, they'll, they'll have Blink Dagger on Jin Q and Blink BKB Black Holes. So you could actually toss people in two black holes uh, like he's been doing over and over again tossing people into the enigma for the eidolon kills primal beast much needed addition to this team fight for extreme gaming as collapse is still alive though dy Thanks. under a little bit of help there for xxs just to make sure he stays alive collapse has managed to make it out with his what i assume is a maxed out surge at this point he's not gonna go back in laurel wants to fight and he's got an arcane rune Absolute beast right now. XG want none of that. They will wisely evacuate. Yeah, they see DY this whole way too, so. Man, that, that go did not seem that promising from XG. The fact Collapse just sits there with this Greaves and there's not much getting done to him. Yeah, power of some uh, aura items. I agree. It's Team Spirit bolstering their five man. And they need it, because you, you need the sustain behind Lashrak. You need to help this hero run in the fight and be able to tank some spells. And right now, that aura item is is doing a lot for Team Spirit and their confidence to take these exchanges. Oh. It's going to be an Ags rush as well. So this is the anti-anti-mage <laughs> plan. He thinks the Terror Blade's down somewhere. Eidolons, some food for Lowell. It's going to be a lot of... Uh, Anti-Mage Illusions in this game. Ame is going to have Manta. He's potentially going to have an Ags. Then you're going to have Shadow Demon who can create his own. You're going to have Dark Seer who can wall him. You're going to have Dark Seer who can punch him. Then you're going to have Lion who can kill Illusions. 
Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Blade mail, BKB, back to Eternal Shroud, and then Ags, I think was XM's idea. I don't think he's gotten too much value out of this early blade mail, though. I must say. No, certainly not. Like, he got some damage on the Lesh in that one fight, but then he died. That's the one thing I think Spirit have done a bit better this game is control the Primal Beast momentum. Yeah, I think... Uh... I, I think one part of this equation that's that's maybe missing for XM is the fact that there's a Shadow Demon with Disruption, right? So he goes in on this Lash Rack, he does a bunch of damage, but then the Disruption goes out, Lash Rack's still dealing damage without tanking it from the Blade Mail. In which case, maybe he should have just gone for the Eternal Shroud like last game. Yeah, but then you're not dealing damage as a mid. Which yeah. I think feels bad. Like that game XXS, he's just tanking up, he's running, he's making space. That's true. This game XM, I guess he could play that role if you believe in the Enigma, but like here, I mean, it's just not he's doing enough. Got Onslaught, but he's not using it immediately, trying to wait a little bit. The Black Hole There's goes off, catching the two. Nice save with the disruption. Mira finishes off the Primal Beast. XXS had no damage behind that Black Hole, so he just dies to the Leshrac inside of his own Black Hole, basically. Uh, this build has just not worked out for him at all. Start is completely gone now as this Lashrak Shadow Demon combination. Like you said, you disrupt him, he's pulsing you the whole time. It feels awful. He comes out, he's he's still high HP. What are you supposed to do? You need the Antimage to be able to join these fights to finish him off. So far, it's been Yatoro lingering around, waiting for Ame to commit. He's going the Ags rush, so he wants to be able to poke and prod these fights. That's a big timing for XG if they can get there, but they've given away a lot of the early game lead, if not all of it at this point. And we're starting to see that team fight scale come into effect for Spirit. The the ball behind this Lesh Darks here setting the fight up for potential Chronos. It's not a good answer to it right now. I no wonder, save on your side. I wonder how well the Ags will dismantle that ball considering the fact that they have a lion. Yeah, these are not the freest anti-mage illusions. Lestrat can also kill them pretty fast if he's not getting stunned. Sure. We have to start thinking about some tossbacks or some way, other way to set the fight up right now because that's an Aegis on the Lesh, so he is giga strong right now. And you gotta remember, like, this pure damage edict to me has been what's brought this hero back in the meta. They buffed Edict's damage, they made this do a little bit more, but on pure damage spells, that counts for a lot. Yeah, you have to be very careful when buffing pure damage. Yes, and it shows in these fights. Heroes like Anti-Mage that, oh, I'm, I'm an Anti-Mage. Well, you're not Anti-Pure, so you just get shredded sometimes. You only have a limited amount of HP here on early game Agi Hero. So, bunch of objectives. Take Roshan, Wisdom Rune, Tormentor. Well, Poshka will get Demonic Cleanse, so he can throw that one on Laurel. Make him even tank here. Laurel is getting tons of buffs, by the way, because at some point you're going to get that, what, the level 15 talent on Darkseer? So, an extra 250 HP. Then you get the, the Demonic Cleanse heal. You're getting Bloodstones. All kinds of stuff. You can even throw the... Uh, uh, dis disseminate? Throw Disseminate yep. on the last track, so if they try and do damage to him, he's so tanky, does a right, bunch of damage right back. There's can the line, line suck him in the fight? Some extra move speed? Yeah, that's true. Extra mana, extra movement speed. There's a, there's a lot they can do with him this game. I might have underestimated a little. I think this game's going to come down to the, the carry impact at the back side of the fights, because... I think XG need this anti mage to pay off big time. Otherwise, I don't see the I don't see their other four heroes really doing much to the four slash five man of Team Spirit here. So Ame's got to be killing Team Spirit heroes without getting caught by Yatoro right? and finding a big man of void in the Lesh ideally at yeah. some point, which means you're dodging this Aegis period for sure. Yeah. That is time Yatoro is using the the farm up with the Midas. They can even throw the Mjolnir charge on this Lesh. Oh yeah, that's true. And XG's lineup has no dispel for this hero. So any buffs you throw on the Lesh in this game are... They're free, man. Yeah. No answer to him right now. That Eternal Shroud is up on the Primal. That's a lot of extra survivability for him. 
And we still haven't seen a tiny toss, so. Oh, that's a that's an amp rune. Even more spell damage. Scary stuff. Yeah, you, you better get out there, Ame. You better get out there fast. You gotta start split pushing because the pressure is gonna be coming in very soon from Team Spirit. They're smoked up looking for a pickoff that allows them to take over. Not finding it just yet. Trying to use this Aegis period and XG again. No way you want to fight the two lives here on Laurel. DY. I, I will say, all the, all the bonuses of Terrorblade, I guess the one downside is kind of a shit shard. But he's still using it in an interesting way where he's like moving around the map and then having his illusions push down lanes with the extra attack speed and stuff. So even then, I guess it's an interesting bonus that a support can give you that kind of pushing power. You can farm a decent amount on this hero. You just have to buy the right ores with it. But he is not doing much for the Lesh Dark here. Yeah. So the axe is done on the enemy. So too is it on the Dark Seer. Cop to Maposhka. Doesn't quite finish him off with the Mana Void, but they'll get him with the Illusions. Now it looks like they're going to lose Yutoro as well. Grabbed by XM with so many Illusions. Gem he on dies the deck. so fast. They lost the gem too. Ame finds the right move. Commits for the Shadow Demon. Knows if he takes the save out of the equation, you get a free black hole on anybody. Massive swing in this game. That is a play into the Aegis on the Lesh that they managed to to sneak through here. Yeah. Huge win for XG. Ame continuing to pull ahead. If he could hit this butterfly timing, then maybe Extreme is back in a back at a point where they can confidently take five on fives versus Team Spirit. Rather than these uh little pickoffs and such. Pickoffs and split pushing. Ideally, you get that fight for that next Aegis. Or a fight that leads to map control for it. Collapse is going to be working on Blink Dagger next, so Ame is going to have to dodge not just Chronosphere, but also the Darkseer punch wall. Like, that, yes. that is also a problem for him. That was actually catching Spirit off guard. They didn't have the sustain there. They didn't have the Dark Seer to, to turn that fight around with the Lesh to frontline it. Mira goes searching with his Glimmer Cape. Aegis out. Spirit still want to take the 5-on-5 five five if XG will give it to them. Middle tower I mean, you don't have Black attack. Hole. I'm surprised XG Radiance are all here. Yeah. Like, what, are you, you, you know, what are you doing in your base right now? In a I sense? Mean, they do always have the toss back. I would just be surprised they would do it on a tier two. Definitely something to think about for Team Spirit if they ever push high ground, though. I mean, DY is riding bottom and Ame is riding top, so they are getting sidelines. They get a D ward as well. That's a value D ward. So not losing too much. Same time, they're looking mid. If somebody shows for Spirit elsewhere on the map, they will take the jump with the tiny. They're just playing it, playing it patient. Farming up that support terribly. I like that Ame came down here through the gate, which may present him an opportunity. No, actually, they TP mid now. As a group, they get to go for a smoke out. Got to try and deal with these areas. You do get that stolen gem. They haven't been using it. Spirit going back to their vision right now will take the pick off. Well, that'll, freebie. that'll probably signal extreme. Yeah, or on the high ground. You're right about that, Shinku. I mean, the vision fights are very good for Spirit if they can ever hold them in this game. You can just set up your formation really easily. You can protect your supports. Makes the jump from Ame a lot more difficult. Holding vision was Team Spirit's MO all the way back at TI-10. Oh, yeah. You're going to steal a lot of farm out here. Yeah, but... Does Ame care about that? He's an AM. He can farm anywhere. That butterfly is closing in. <sighs> Didn't get that creep, though. It's a big CS. <laughs> big 
CS. Yeah, yeah big CS he missed. <laughs> the big CS. He doesn't even know he missed because it was oh, an illusion. Oh, he knows. He knows. Yeah. I think he was microing that illusion there. Dyer's bottom Might have been. Canceling backswings. Is there anything more satisfying than watching the Antimage farm? Oh, yeah. That is... I, I wish we could just have a 60-minute game of watching AM farm. I wish more people... I wish you could pick AM multiple times. We'd have oh, AM on AM action. Oh, God. An AM on AM game where they're, they're just all over the map that would be, farming neutrals. That, that would be the dream. Just eight anti-mages and then, like, two pudges. You're just farming it. Oh, my. I mean, that's prime ASMR content right there. We can finally figure out who's the best carry. That's true. It's like SF versus SF. AM versus AM is just the ultimate mm. carry 1v1. Radiant's top tower is under Line has been drawn. They got that butterfly. That's it's awesome. time for Extreme to go on the offensive. They're going to run straight into Yatoro. Immediately throw some illusions at him. They actually caught two on the side here with the avalanche. And XM's gonna pull right through them. Go for the line, see if he can finish that one up. Slowed down by the Shadow Demon Purge. It's annoying. Shin is gonna be caught by Laurel. The Black Bull oh, goes out. Actually caught Yutoro. Can no they throw save. damage on him? They're gonna try to disrupt him. It, it might have just saved him. Ami is now stuck inside the wall after can one. Yutoro's still dead though. A vacuum back up. Oh. Got everybody for He's out of mana. Dream, but Laurel is out of mana. He just has just enough to throw one more spell to finish up that AM, but XM is still a problem as he's running around with Shin Q, looks to finish off the Darks here, got him there. Shin Q stopping the Shadow Demon, but bounced after by Laurel. Bloodstone gets him a little bit back. Is that enough to finish off this Primal Beast who has Pulverized? He's gonna grab Laurel, slam him down. Trample's coming up, but the Split Earth, it just keeps hitting. And it's going to be Laurel with the ultra kill. Well-deserved carry of Team Spirit in that fight. He just blinked into everybody there on top of that Antimage. Zero fucks given by Laurel in this game. Absolutely decimating the team fight positioning here from XG and forcing Ame back. Yeah, yeah Toro to an AM. This AM got all his mana burnt out from the darks here as well at some point in this fight. The whole lands, they barely managed to save Yatoro, but look at the wall illusion. The wall Just working the on him. Ame ends out of this stun with zero mana. Has to man fight Laurel with zero mana, but he already used mana void. So yeah, he got at a this point, more. you're not winning that trade. Collapse just found his target and Yatoro happy that his teammates can carry him there because he didn't get to do anything. They... Single target focused him into oblivion, and despite the saves, no Chrono in that fight. But now you have Black Hole on cooldown, cool down, and you have Chrono up, which means you'd put another Aegis on this little track. Yeah, and, and, and add one more thing. That was their butterfly timing. Next fight is yes. going to be Yatoro's MKB timing. So he is racing towards it here. Yeah. Uh, Laurel has is, is been a force, force of nature this game. They don't have the damage to put into him. Like, you look at this lineup, it's a lot of random spell damage. It's a lot of, you know, you throw down a pulse, you throw down a reflection. Like, these spells are nice, but they're not chunking down this Disco Pony. It's and not the same threat as the Zeus was. No. Right? I think that's a big difference. There's no heavy burst damage outside of you find him with a Pulverize or Ame can connect on him. I feel like this AM needs Abyssal or something. He's going Disperser for increased mana burn. He wants to find this big void on the Lesh, but there's a lot of disruption. You don't have BKB. You're having issues sticking on him. You go on the Lesh, what happens when you get vacked into a wall and then you get punched? Then you have to go on the Lesh again, right? And then there's some disruption or Chrono. Yeah. I don't know how easy it is to burn out this guy's mana right now. And if he gets to deplete his mana pool, it probably means your team is dead. Because XSS is, he has to Chrono the Void. Or he has to Black Hole the Void so he doesn't get Chronoed, which means... You can't just run in and black hole this Lashrak to give you the extra damage. And Aegis on Yatoro is going to prevent that route now. The MKB done, as you said. Team Spirit are continuing to find answers for XG's team fight wall. XG. There's no clear pathway to the 5-on-5. Five five. There is still the the split push problem, which you solve by just going high ground, but then it comes into, okay, but like, what about the, the toss back and potential high ground defense? You gotta try and catch these guys when they're out on the map. 
It's going to be difficult. Pipe done for the Terror Blade. Okay, that's one way to, to try and slow down this Lushrex damage. Now, you got the Ags on the Primal as well, so you can throw some break in here. Some extra damage off that. And you got Ags on the Enigma. That's a lot of extra damage. Yeah. This is like the payoff of the Blink BKB in this game. You eventually get to the Ags. You add in the extra 3.5%. You get the pull in, which means you might just catch, you know, a third hero instead of only two. Makes a huge difference here. It's so crazy, though, to like from the get go settle on. Yeah, I want to go the late game build against Faceless Void. I, I think that that takes a lot of confidence to say that's what you want to do. Confidence of this Chrono is either never going to come out or get forced on a bad target. Smoked up the side, running into each other here. Shin Q is going to avalanche, and they burn out the mana as much as they can. Throw another one he's at trapped. him. He's stuck! Oh, he stuck himself by the time walk. He's going to have enough to get away, and he does have the Aegis, but that is not a great way for Team Spirit to start things. Okay, never mind. Line. It's, it's going to be solved by Mira. We're all good. Everybody calm down. Still looking for this Disperser. I mean, this mana burn is gonna hurt. Really gonna hurt, especially on some of these like random supports. Might just take the mana void on the Shadow Demon or the Lion again. You can find the quick pick off. I, I just don't see how he ever, how they ever like really jump the last strike. Because if they jump with the Primal Beast and Pulverize and AM jumps after that, then you're just probably going to get chrono to toss or somebody back. Or vacuumed. Yeah, I think it's the toss back. It's really what it is. The thing is, there's there's instant hex waiting for you if you jump in with Tiny. Bottom tower is under I mean, may, I mean maybe, maybe they just get him sometime where he doesn't have his ult going on. They Pulverize and he just throws all the illusions at it. And the illusions do enough. I mean, I think that's the plan. I don't think when the Tiny or the Primal jump somebody that Ame is going to jump with them. Yeah. Radiance top tower is under attack. You could throw illusions on that guy and then jump somebody else. Use the the few seconds of confusion. Yeah. The fog of war. The chaos. But Team Spirit seem pretty content right now. This time around, they have the Void that has not lost a lot of late games in this event as this hero tends to do. Eidolons ruthlessly massacred here. How many Eidolons have died in this game? Well, there you go, Austin, right on cue. I'm just setting up production to look good, you know? Found a little catch. <laughs> Blade mail and pipe put onto him. Now he's maxed out on Eternal Shroud, so he gets the full heal, and he's got so much magic resistance. They're still going to go for him, though. Yutoro, he can do the damage with the help of Laurel. I'll bring him down. Okay. Now you're all in on a bit of, of split pushing going on. I guess they do have the buyback of the Primal Beast if Team Spirit kept going, which they can't, because Ame's always there. Always knocking on a Tier 3. His next item choice is really important in this game. On top of getting that level 25 talent. Scythe the Vice immediately put to use here. Pops BKP too. Wants to make sure there's no follow-up from Extreme Gaming that can save Shin Q. Good for staff, but... He, oh, it actually got the gem down. Claps is going to find it, though. Claps is going to find... No, okay, Claps didn't find it. Can't deal with the hill. Oh, he got pushed over the cliff. The punch. Oh, pull him back in. Give him a little bit of hope. And then take it right away. And D.Y. was... Something was messing him up with that D-Ward. He just lingered there way too long. Hey, this is uh, twice now that Team Spirit played around this high ground ward, found an opportunity and to hit high ground. No rat action happening on the AM. Nope. He already left that bottom lane. He's... Here, a Tormentor closing in on 25, though. Yeah, he Does wants, that make a big difference? He, he wants his mana void cooldown, is, is my guess. Could make a huge difference in these fights, because it allows him to pick off a support, disengage, and then look for the re-engage. Yeah. Which is a big deal. Radiance middle barracks are under a little attack. bit surprised. Uh, I, I thought with the last track, he would oh. go the 250. Oh, he got caught. Oh, got him. 
It's been into a the lot wall, of into the disruption. One million illusions, and none of them are going to be able to hit the AM because the chrono. This game is just becoming way too difficult for Ami to play. Yeah, that's that's kind of like your one, right? You get picked off once on the AM, and then everything starts to crumble. I feel couldn't get off the Sunder BKB wisely used by Laurel because you killed the AM. You get any extra pickoffs? It's it's kind of a free high ground push for you. And they're gonna take it. Radiance middle barracks are under. Attack. Just waiting on the team. Now, I mean, you have to think about some really deep toss back and black hole action with the Chrono on cooldown. But that's basically the only threat XG have here. Yep. And Team Spirit are probably thinking about uh, you know the buybacks that could be there. We know Extreme does not have buyback on these two heroes, so and they're pre-clicking this hex. Yeah, instantly yeah, they got there. It. As soon as Shin Q jumps in. And he wasn't even going for the toss. He was just going for harassment. XM. He'll get back. 35 seconds until Ame is back up. Team Spirit, though, at that point in time, they've already taken mid, so that's always going to be pushed in. Top lane, it's going to be pushed in as well. This tier 2 tower. Oh, an amp damage rune. That's a nice little one. Bottle. Give Pass it to that. Yotoro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice, very nice. You said hand of minus. Swap in the BKB again, I assume. Yeah. All ready to go. You know, just your 10 and 0 Lishrak giving his bottle to his 1 and 3 void. Nice little team player. What a guy. What a swell lad Laurel is. They're just going to play for next Roche. No reason to try and throw this game going high ground without an Aegis for another lane of racks that doesn't mean much in the grand scheme of things. And XG are feeling that pressure. They are smoked out right now. They are missing Ame's level 25 by 150 XP. So he's going to have to make do without it. No buyback on this AM as well. He's just all in. They see the OBS. Laurel's just going to tank the jump. Yeah. He's willing to tank it. Illusions start poking at him. All right, so that mana burn is it's increased since the last fight. Yeah, that, uh, that illusion died pretty quickly, and it still burned through a healthy amount. He's so close to 25-2 on this AM. He'll get it if one hero dies. This is not a hill you want to go up versus Lashrak Shard right now. Yeah, they're both taking the same, kind of the same amount of damage here. XM, did he cancel the Onslaught, or did he... Did the Purge screw him somehow? I, don't, I think he can't. I have to he cancel it. Yeah. Oh, got him on the edge. Yutora found his target. Black they get the black hole. Him in. In inside of the chronosphere. What a disaster. Is that going to be okay, though? They get the wall vacuum, and it's all clean for Team Spirit from here. XXS did his best in what he could do, but uh, it doesn't change. The AM has no room to play once they lock him down. Yatoro looks for his revenge, and he gets it a chrono on Ame to end this game. Even though you get sucked through a chrono sphere, that makes no goddamn sense. Dude, that was a cool <laughs> interaction. I've that they, was that like looked on real the bad. Edge of chrono sphere, and they get pulled into it. They get pulled through it. It's just, what are you even like coming back into in this game? It, yeah. it doesn't feel like there's a point where the.